Hello, I'm Kendall Taylor Wright, she, her, hers. I'm a non-traditional Metropolitan State University of Denver student studying art history and Africana studies. As an equity peer leader for the Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion, my team and I strive to provide equitable programming for MSU Denver students with open attendance for faculty, staff, and the Auraria campus at large. Please utilize this presentation as pre-work or as an introduction prior to any diversity, equity, and inclusion training or workshop. This presentation is meant to be an overview of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Along your educational journey, you are encouraged to revisit this presentation. I will begin by breaking down the components and principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. I will begin the explanation of each term with the Merriam-Webster definition, then I'll relate the meaning and usage to DEI work. Diversity, the definition reads, the condition of having or being composed of differing elements, or as I will explain, the differences within groups and or environments. This principle of DEI refers to the vast variety of human experiences. In a group setting, like a workplace, each person is equipped with a unique and valuable perspective. These differences should be celebrated and encouraged. Equity. This is defined as justice according to natural law or right, specifically freedom from bias or favoritism. I will further explain this term as the principle of ensuring all humans have a fair chance to exist. Beyond that, equity promotes the creation and use of social and institutional systems that function impartially and strive to be free from bias. Inclusion. This is defined as the act of including, the state of being included, and something that is included. In DEI work, this relates to the practice and intention to create safe spaces through healthy communications, collaboration, thoughtful cultural awareness, and reasonable sensitivity to a fellow human. Another way I like to think about this principle is the act of being included and to include others requires a healthy ability to empathize and accept another. Inclusion is the act of non-judgmental and mutual social integration. And justice. And this is where we see the acronym, acronym JEDI or J-E-D-I. DEI, as it's more widely known, represents the tools for justice, accountability, education, and collaboration among others. Justice is the implied outcome of DEI work. In CMEI, which is the Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion, as I mentioned before, the term JEDI or J-E-D-I is used. The difference in the acronym is to acknowledge justice as the outcome of DEI work. Whether or not you personally or professionally would like to use JEDI or DEI, the takeaway is both terms refer to diversity, equity, and inclusion work and the justice that it strives for. Just as I've done with the other terms, Merriam-Webster defines justice as the maintenance or administration of what is just, especially by the impartial adjustment of conflicting claims or the assignment of merited rewards or punishments. DEI trainings, workshops, talks, etc., act as great tools for racial and social justice activism and advocacy. Just as DEI education can enhance communication and interpersonal skills. So let's discuss the purpose of DEI work. And to do that, let's address the elephant in the room being the stereotypes around diversity, equity, and inclusion work. There is no political agenda. Later in this lecture, I will further explain why the political connection is false. In a similar breath, there is a negative connotation uh, that DEI really only comes a resource or becomes involved when someone or something has gone wrong or bad. 
This creates a false purpose that promotes maybe a feeling of shame, but this is not a guilt trip, nor is DEI just for white or white passing people. This is not just for affluent people. DEI is a benefit for all ethnicity and racial identities. No one identity group requires DEI more than another. Another aspect of false purpose is that DEI education and work is not a replacement for other ways one can address their own human development and conduct. DEI should be in addition to, to healthy practices like therapy, exercising, seeking a life coach when needed, returning to college, gardening. DEI work and materials should not be the only form of education. Rather, they are tools, supplemental and enhance other facets of life. And finally, discussing the true purpose of diversity, equity, and inclusion is continued education. And this is education of self and of others. All identity groups have implicit bias. DEI is one way a person can adjust, address, or even combat actions and belief systems. And finally, the true purpose is this is an, a way to enhance empathy, a chance for per personal introspection and growth. DEI is a chance to elevate communication skills and an opportunity to hone your understanding of another's individual experience while gaining cultural competency. Inclusive communications, another facet of DEI. When we think of inclusive communications, I like to think that new words are inducted into the dictionary, new species are discovered, theories refined, formula solved. The same acceptance of change should be applied to the evolution of someone's personal identity. Inclusive and gender neutral language are wonderful ways to promote safe spaces, making it easier for inclusive diversity to thrive. What can some gender neutral language look like or sound like? Some defaults we have might be firemen, when instead we can say firefighter. Same as applied to mailmen, we can say mail carrier or mail person. And finally, mankind. We can refer to that as humans, people, or humankind. How someone desires to identify pronouns, gender, sexual identity, ethnicity, race, is not something you're supposed to know about every person innately. Rather, the use of gender neutral language helps to create a safe space for a spectrum of existences. This allows more people a chance to feel comfortable enough to express themselves because standards, implemented standards, have been created to create this safe space for freedom and mutual respect. No one is meant to be perfect or reach a level of perfection by the end of a DEI session. With inclusive communication tactics in mind, DEI participation may come with a foundational set of best practices. Not only can practices like these help to maintain healthy interpersonal interactions, these practices can also be beneficial for discussions, dialogues, panels, and in a, a multitude of social situations. Let's begin. First one I'd like to start with is we commit to confidentiality. What is learned in a DEI training can leave, but what is shared in the safe space needs to stay there. This helps to maintain privacy and solidify a brave space where people can honestly engage. The next, our primary commitment is to learn from each other. In a DEI discussion, all participants are encouraged to listen to one another and not talk at each other. And this is better to help us raise awareness and understanding of differences and similarities. Next, we'll discuss the acceptance and acceptance of a lack of closure. DEI is a start of a conversation, one that I hope leaves you with lingering questions and thoughts. The information you learn may not be used immediately. Furthermore, you may have 
to experience something firsthand or have a loved one experience something for you to fully understand an aspect of DEI content. When you're in the spaces of learning DEI work, please monitor your airtime. Be mindful of the amount of space you're taking up. On that same note, empower yourself to speak up when others may be dominating conversations. This awareness allows a, all participants a chance to speak if they desire. Next, when we challenge, we challenge the idea, not the person. In DEI sessions, we will not demean, devalue, or put down people for their experiences, lack of experiences, or difference in interpretation of these experiences. And that leads us to the final point. We will trust that people are doing their best and that we are co-learners. In this, we recognize that it is likely that we have learned misinformation about our own group or members of another group. We will hold ourselves accountable when it comes to repeating this information or offensive behavior after we've learned otherwise. Let's discuss some potential topics that you might find within DEI work. This is not an exhaustive list, rather insight to help you identify or research how you'd like to further your DEI education. You might come across identity workshops, empathy trainings, how to combat the bystander effect, implicit bias education, how to identify domestic violence, cultural competency insights, social justice awareness, anti-ableist, excuse me, anti-ableism activism, healthy relationships, stereotype threat, ally, accomplice, co-conspirator, supporter, advocate, student, teacher, activist, artist, Regardless of how you'd like to describe or label how you utilize DEI work, these titles refer to the accountability of collective and individual actions for justice and the betterment of others. The pyramid of accountability being used on this slide was created by the artist Jess Bird and shared by Britt Hawthorne. Their information is in the comment section below. After we've learned aspects of DEI, how can we put them into action? Thinking back to those titles, let's review how some of that might manifest. I'll start with the classic manifestation that people associate with DEI, voting, marches, political involvement. In that, we don't have to identify with maybe aspects that have been done in the past, um, and what continued to occur, but how you can still utilize DEI would be maybe to work with the HOA board, insert yourself in places of power when you can, serving on different boards and committees, and utilizing nationality privilege for voting, and also signing petitions. DEI in action can also be helpful in social gatherings, holidays, meals, vacations, when we visit elders in assisted living homes, vis visiting loved ones in hospitals, funerals, family reunions, workplaces, and sports. Another way to turn DEI into action would be volunteering. We understand volunteering in a traditional sense, maybe at a soup kitchen. But this can also be done in youth shelters, in arts programs, street cleaning, donations, religious centers, working as a theater usher, or utilizing administrative or accounting skills. Another way DEI can be put into action is within organization and networking. I'm sure you know people. <laughs> if you can't directly participate, link up with friends or connect friends, share information when you can. Monetary support is not a cop-out. Sometimes it's the best way people can utilize their resources. And finally, a great way to turn DEI into action is through solidarity. Could be passing the microphone, speaking up, 
combating the bystander effect, wearing a color of a movement, standing in silence, staring at a couple loudly fighting, constant and continuous education, leveraging privileges for the betterment of others. There is no shame in how little or how much you can do. It's the effort that will help impact justice, alter self-awareness, raise cultural competency for an equitable outcome. I would like to also discuss why there's so much conflict. Again, thinking back to the negative connotations, DEI sometimes has an energy that feels combative to people, but I would like to address that. Largely, we've, let's look at social norms. We are taught to not talk about religions, politics, money, in workplaces, in schools, in our social settings that we spend a lot of time in. Whether on purpose or an accident, most of us tend to discuss our ideas and experience, experiences excuse me, with like-minded people. When it comes to speaking with folks who don't have the same lived experiences, this can cause misunderstandings and conflict. Next, conflict is derived from discomfort. Some people are not okay with being uncomfortable, but we must lean into that discomfort. Next, some folks are afraid to make mistakes. And generally, most people don't want to make mistakes, but mistakes are inevitable. Mistakes are inevitable of a growth and learning process. From there, we must learn from them. And beyond that, really taking the steps to understand how to properly apologize. In reference to the values that are violated, when we dig deeper into who we are, there are aspects of our value systems that maybe some people have not even taken a moment to examine, and there's nothing wrong with that. DEI can be a great space to examine aspects that you may not have thought about. Last, undiagnosed or unknown aspect. Again, as we dig deeper into ourselves, medical health professionals and other professionals may be best equipped for you to discuss certain topics. This will come with a trial and error, but if we all are aware we can best direct folks to proper resources. Please remember, conflict does not make us bad people or wrong. It is how we handle the conflict that speaks to our emotional intelligence. No one is perfect, but with a commitment to continuous education of self and others, we can reduce conflict and expand on those pleasant interpersonal relationships. I would like to bring this presentation to a close with some final thoughts. The artwork I'll be utilizing was created by Hazel Mead. Again, information in the comments. We live in a society that requires and cultivates the duality of winners, losers, black, white, male, female, etc. DEI practices help us to ensure the same standard of existence for one can be extended to as many other humans as possible. This concept of equity is not meant to be aligned with any political agenda. DEI content is meant to address human condition. And looking at the image that we have, we have folks queued up at a bus stop. The first person in the queue Above their head says they're on their period. The person behind them has a Britney, I assume Britney Spears, <laughs> song stuck in his head. Behind him, a woman is dealing with endometriosis. Behind her, a man is off on a blind date. Behind him, the person is feeling horny. And the last person of the image has a cold, you know, the type with a pathetic sniff, not the satisfying release of phlegm. Equity demands that Republican Madison Cawthorn and Democrat Pep, excuse me, Tammy Duckworth can access the same government building with ease as a non-disabled body. DEI works to hold many levels of public spaces accountable so that all identities can access 
the Capitol building regardless of party affiliation. This, I hope, helps to clarify that there should not be a political agenda aligned. Rather, this is a humanitarian-based effort and humanistic perspective. On this slide, the first person in line just got a promotion. Person behind them, the bus is late and has triggered anxiety. The woman behind that person is on their second round of IVF and it worked. Person behind her, phone, battery is low. And behind that person, they just had an idea for a best-selling novel. Behind them, that person just lost their mom. And the last woman didn't get much sleep last night. Bladder kept her awake. DEI is not a guilt trip. DEI is a way to promote personal growth for the overall betterment of a community and in turn, the nation and beyond. On this slide, the first person is wondering what to have for lunch. The person behind them is feeling suicidal. The woman behind that person is running late for her class and breathe, two, three, four. And behind her, he just got an interview for a job he really wanted. And the couple behind them just got married. And the last person is off on the blind date with a man in the front of the queue. DEI materials and topics should never make you feel ashamed, but just the same, lean into any discomfort you may experience as those moments are opportunities for growth and education. DEI work can bring awareness to as aspects of self that are new and allow participants to revisit old habits. And on this last slide, the first person survived cancer. The next person, off to the theater with an old friend. The next man just got custody of his son. And the person behind him has body dysmorphia. And the last person just cannot be bothered with today. <laughs> thank you for being self-aware, for questioning the equity of our society. And thank you for taking ap actionable steps to further justice in your life, community, nation and growth.